We don't have good soil health. It's been said that other nations have collapsed because of how they mistreated the soil. That's our livelihood. That's our be all of end all. That's our everything. I'm uh, Rob, Rob Hetherington. Our farm is 16 kilometres north of Lake King. So we've got two and a half thousand hectares here all told and it's split into two blocks. The soils predominantly on, on this home farm is the moral soils, which is the, the loamy lake bank country soil. And on the other block, we've got a mixture of some heavy mallee clay, some real light sand, and then the rest is just the, the normal loamy gravel country that we have. Being a soil health champion is actually having the courage to follow your convictions of what you believe is right and not being worried about criticism or what other people might think. Healthy soil is a soil whereby you, you walk out there in the field and you can feel it soft underfoot. You can see activity on the surface from the fact that it's aerated from the organisms and, and worms and then you crack it open and then you can see the actual flocculation that's happening in the soil, the oxygen and then also the smell. Nature is pretty forgiving. It will give you a certain amount for a while, but, but then it starts to kick back and then you've got to start taking another look at how you have to get alongside it and look after it so it looks after you. Well, some people said I should have been a scientist. I guess when I think about it, maybe they might be right to a certain extent. I can always use my science in what I'm doing in, in the soil and in agriculture. And this is what I'm doing and this is what I enjoy doing. The first order of business is obviously doing a soil test because there's that saying, why well, guess when you can measure, which is what a lot of us do, which we shouldn't do. So you take a soil test, money well worth spent, and then you, you work out what's deficient and then what you've got in the excess, and then you start addressing those problems. In my case, it was calcium, which was deficient, and phosphate. So you start addressing those, and then later on you come back behind and then start doing your trace elements. I've always um, been a big believer that um, calcium always you always get a better result by incorporating it because you're mixing it in the profile. So tillage I, I see as a, a thing that's necessary at times and there has been times when I've also put the lime out and incorporated that with a green manure as well or with stubble. Tillage is not too bad as long as you're incorporating something with it to feed the organisms and build it back up again. The most important thing is to get air in the soil, so that's what tillage does. Obviously there's a point where you can over-till, which we all know, so there's a right, right place for it. Microbes are very important, but so is minerals, because obviously microbes like to eat food the same as we do. I think the most important thing is to provide the food sources for the the microbes and then cultivate the indigenous microbes that we have already here and then you get the, the effect down the food chain with one organism eats another and food source for another one so earthworms and all those sorts of things. So. Whatever we're doing with our soil we should always think that are we harming the organisms or are we actually helping them. Obviously the first thing to do is to gain a bit of knowledge yourself look at uh, other peers around who are doing something similar to the path that you want to go down, but then we still have to put it into practice. And that's where the rubber hits the road. That's when we do things wrong, right, and we learn a lot from our mistakes and we're always learning and improving in what we're doing. It's a natural thing that is in me and just like to see plants and how they grow and the health and you know, you do the right thing by them. and they actually respond. The pleasure is, you know, when it actually does unfold to be a good outturn. Just the actual joy of being able to help others, you know, those who are willing to learn. Because, you know, obviously when you get older, one would hope that you've got wisdom to impart onto others and help them. It is all in our hands, it is all in our hands.